Welcome, or welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about Argentina and Spain. And we're going to do it in the beautiful little town of Chacras de Coria. Come along, let's go. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So say you're a YouTuber and you're in Argentina. You want to make a video about the history of Spain and Argentina and the relationship and all that stuff. What do you do? Well, I mean, obviously you're in Argentina. It's a former Spanish colony. You just go out and you find some like cool old Spanish colonial buildings and architecture, churches and cathedrals and whatnot. And you, you show those off while you're talking about the history. But uh, unfortunately, we can't do that because we're in Mendoza. And in Mendoza, like I said in some previous videos, in 1861, there was a huge earthquake and it wiped out pretty much everything. Um, so there's, there's really nothing left as far as trying to find old Spanish colonial architecture. But what we decided to do is to, the next best thing. We came to Chacras de Coria. And what is Chacras de Coria? It's this cool little town south of the city of Mendoza. And uh, they actually have like some Spanish style, colonial style architecture here, like inspired by Spanish colonial architecture. So it's kind of the next best thing. And uh, let's, let's take a look. We're right here in the central plaza. It's this beautiful central plaza. They have these nice, uh, I don't even know what you would call this, trellis with vines on it benches underneath so you can sit in the shade which is really good today because uh, once again it's extremely extremely hot out today very very hot but as you can see here right across the plaza this is church a very beautiful church in the old Spanish colonial style Parroquia Nuestra Señora del Perpetuo uh, Socorro, which I think is like Our Lady of Perpetual Help. And yeah, it looks looks very uh, Spanish colonial. It's very cool. Uh, the church is closed right now because it's the middle of the day. I think it's going to be open up later. And maybe we can go inside and take a look inside as well. But for now, you can just look around the outside. There's this nice little garden area out here and another building over to the side. But it does, it does look very Spanish colonial era. And that's how they've sort of recreated a lot of things in this town to try and make it look that way. And that's pretty cool. This town is uh, named Chacras de Coria because it used to be owned, the whole area, by um, a uh, well, very wealthy family, the Coria family, and was later sold, of course, but uh, they still maintain the name, Chacras de Coria. There's a bunch of little restaurants, cafes, um, bodegas, which are wineries, not uh, little corner stores. If you're from the United States, especially like East Coast, United States, you know, around like New York, they call everything little corner stores, they call them bodegas. But that's not what a bodega is here. In Argentina, a bodega is a winery or a vineyard. And there are a bunch of them around here. There's also this really cool theater, Teatro Leonardo Fabio. Sort of a Spanish colonial style architecture, I guess you would say. Anyway, let's talk a little bit talk a little bit about the long history of Spain and Argentina and it's a it's a long history 1536 that is when the Spanish settled here in Buenos Aires for the first time there were uh, I think uh, expeditions to sort of like um, check it out but not actually form a settlement maybe 20 or so years before then in like the early early 1500s but 1536, that's when they uh, put the first flag down and had a settlement. But that settlement actually didn't last very long. 
It lasted for like, uh, I think like five years maybe, at the most, four years, five years. And uh, I was beset by famines and disease and attacks from hostile indigenous. And well, they decided maybe it's not a good time to build a settlement. So they picked up stakes. They floated their way back up the Paraná River to Asuncion, which is now, of course, the capital of Paraguay. And they stayed there for about, I don't know, 45 more years. Just hanging out, waiting until the time was right to go back. And in 1580, they went back. They put down a settlement in Buenos Aires. And uh, that one actually stuck. And that's the one that turned into the megalopolis that is Buenos Aires today with like three million people in the city and I don't know, 10, 11, 12 million people in the metro area. Gigantic, gigantic urban sprawl of Buenos Aires. Beautiful city, but uh, all started there in 1536. But again, really in 1580. Notice here in Chacaras de Coria, just like in the uh, city of Mendoza, there's trees, tons of big, very large, old, old trees covering, giving shade cover on the entire street. Uh, and of course, they are maintained the same way as uh, in Mendoza by these water channels right here that run along the streets. They run along the streets, they irrigate the trees. I still think that's so amazing. I've mentioned that in pretty much every video we've made here about Mendoza, but I mean, it's pretty cool, right? They grow in gigantic trees out in the desert. Like, come on, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad thing, not a bad idea. So anyway, beautiful, beautiful streets like this. As mentioned before, lots of shops, cafes, there's a nice little wine shop over there. This is sort of a little mini mall with like a wine shop and some restaurants inside. This cafe here on the corner. Very nice. Even though it is, like I mentioned, quite hot here, it is pretty nice to walk around here. There's uh, a lot of stuff to see. Here's Jeb's restaurant, bakery, cafe. Apparently very, very high-end trendy ice cream shop. actually is a really nice little town walking around seeing all these sort of houses that are uh, with all the Spanish tile roofs in this uh, sort of old colonial style everything sort of has like walls around it like this this reminds me I would say sort of of like the um, the German village that we that we visited Vicha General Belgrano outside of Cordoba in that it's like has sort of sort of uh, a certain inspiration for the architecture although that village was actually founded by uh, German settlers well I suppose technically this was founded by Spanish settlers as the whole country was it also kind of reminds me of the uh, neighborhood we visited in Buenos Aires the uh, neighborhood that uh, had a lot of like English and Irish sort of style architecture. Coughlin, I think it was called. Coughlin. Anyway, there's going to be links to all of those videos down in the description if you want to check them out. But we're getting off tangent here. This is how it always happens. We find a nice place. We start walking around. We get off into a tangent. And uh, we forget what we're here to talk about. Which is, oh wow, look at that. See right there, ADD brain. I see this kind of cool looking house. I wanna film it in the middle of talking about how we get off into a tangent and we forget what we're supposed to be talking about. I forgot what I was supposed to be talking about right in the middle of it. Uh, I got problems guys, anyway. Let's take a turn here off of this street and we'll try and remember exactly what it is we're supposed to be talking about, which is the history of Spain and Argentina.
So, 1580, a solidly planted, uh, you know, a, a, a colony here, Buenos Aires. Of course, in Cordoba, around the same time, they founded that city. Mendoza, here, was founded around the same time, the original foundation site, which we visited in a previous video. Link in the description. But the interesting thing about Spanish um, history and Spanish uh, influence is, you know, the Spanish were here until from the 1500s, late 1500s, and they were in control here all the way up until Argentine independence in 1816, roughly. Now, there were a bunch of civil wars and whatnot happening afterwards, sort of the cleanup of Argentine independence. But uh, Argentina as a nation didn't really exist as the modern nation that it is until like the 1850s. So if we put that 1850 as the uh, new era for Argentina, there was actually a lot of Spanish immigration after 1850. Like from 1850 up until World War II, there were like two million something uh, people from Spain who came here to Argentina and immigrated. In fact, it was something like 30% of all the immigrants who came during that time, you know, the great European immigration boom in Argentina, yeah, like 30% of them were, were from Spain, which, I mean, it makes perfect sense. You know, you're going to immigrate somewhere. It's probably going to be a place where they speak the same language. Although, interestingly, a large percentage of the people who immigrated from Spain were from Galicia, which is a part of Spain where they don't actually speak Spanish. They speak a different language. I think it's called Galician. And uh, there were also Basques from the uh, you know, southern part of Spain and the border again uh, along, uh, along France, who also emigrated here during that time period. They also don't speak Spanish. They speak Basque. If you know anything about Spain, uh, they actually speak a lot of different languages there, not just Spanish. And they speak different versions of Spanish there. Like different regions speak different kinds of Spanish. So it's a very interesting country. Who knows, maybe one day we'll actually end up there. Try and test out our Spanish skills in, you know, the actual, the actual mainland Spain. But seems the, uh, sidewalk that we're walking on has ended and I don't know where we are before the uh, Argentine independence before Argentina became a modern nation like I mentioned they were a Spanish colonial power and originally everything here was under the uh, vice royalty of Peru so Peru of course is a pretty small country compared to Argentina Argentina is much much bigger but everything was the vice royalty of Peru. And there were like different governance, um, you know, below the viceroy in Peru. So there was like one in Cusho, which is here in Mendoza. There was one in Chile. And, you know, after, oh gosh, I don't know, 150, 200 years or so, they, uh, they made a new one, the vice royalty of Rio de la Plata. And that's what became modern Argentina. And I think I mentioned in a video before, the video about Chile and uh, Argentina. <coughs> the yippy little dog on the other side of this fence. I think I mentioned before in the video about Chile and Argentina that uh, the vice royalty of Peru, when the vice royalty of Rio de la Plata split off um, Cusho province, which was originally part of Chile, the Kingdom of Chile, um, split off and became part of the Vice Royalty of Rio de la Plata. And that's why Mendoza has a lot of um, cultural ties to Chile. A lot closer cultural ties to Chile than other provinces in, um, in Argentina. Which of course makes sense right here next to Chile. All you gotta do is go over some gigantic mountains and, uh, and you're right there, here in Santiago. I think from Mendoza, you can actually take a bus over to Santiago. It's about a seven hour, eight hour bus ride. But that's mainly because 
you gotta like weave your way through the mountains. If you take a plane from here to Santiago, it's like one hour. So, very close to Chile. And because the Spanish had colonized here and this was a Spanish colony for so long, you end up with whole generations who have been born here in the Americas, referred to as criollos or creoles, sort of like uh, the same in North America, my country, the United States, you have the same thing. And eventually, after a long enough time, the identity of people here in the Americas starts to diverge from people who live in mainland Spain, or peninsulares, as they were called, because they lived on the Iberian Peninsula. So in addition to Criollos here, Argentines here from Spanish descent in the colonial era, developing sort of their own culture just from being apart from the mainland for so long, there also was a lot of uh, uh, mixing with indigenous people here and also with African slaves who were brought here during the slave trade. And so you end up with a, a rich mix of cultures here in Argentina, like you do in a lot of places in the Americas. As I've been staying here in Argentina, I've been thinking more and more about uh, the, uh, the similarities between Argentina and the United States. And I never really thought about it too much until I was here, but they really are very similar countries. They're in a lot of ways have a lot of the same, um, the same history, especially in that they're both European colonies. They both fought wars of independence, so they still have the uh, influences from the colonizing countries. They also had a period of uh, pretty much like open immigration towards the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 20th century, which brought in people from all over the world, all kinds of different cultures, uh, from Europe, from Asia, from everywhere really. And you end up with a very, um, very interesting culture that's mixed from, uh, from bits and pieces of cultures from all over the place. Uh, I've, noticed, I've noticed that specifically, very specifically, in Argentine food. Because Argentina, for example, uh, they, have, they have a lot of different types of food that are similar to like uh, food from other countries, but they're sort of the Argentine version of it. And that's something that happens a lot in the United States as well. You get Americanized United States versions of things. And uh, I think it's really interesting to see that here in Argentina. One of the major things you see here in Argentina, just like in pretty much every former Spanish colony, uh, that, that shows the Spanish influence is Catholicism. Uh, a vast majority of people in Argentina are Catholic. I think it's something like 80 or 85 percent um, are Catholic. Now we've mentioned the influence of other religions in some of our previous videos. Uh, there's a relatively large population of Jewish people in Argentina, also a relatively large population of Muslim people in Argentina, but I mean it's nothing, nothing close to the amount of Catholics that there are in Argentina. Some of that also comes from the uh, large wave of Italian immigration like we talked about in our last video. Um, but, I mean, you know, this has been a Catholic country since, since the start, and the, uh, the Catholic missionaries, uh, the Jesuits who came here, and all the other uh, orders of uh, religious orders from the Catholic Church, who played a, a huge role in, uh, in the culture here in Argentina and, and building up the, the country to what it is today, um, it, it, you can definitely see the influence everywhere, just like you can, like I said, across pretty much all of Latin America and all of uh, um, former Spanish colonies. So because of all of this connected history with Spain, colonial history, the uh, influx of Spanish immigrants during the European immigration wave in modern Argentine history, Spanish is the largest influence on the culture of Argentina here. and. Um, you can, you can tell that the, 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 everybody in Argentina, almost everybody in Argentina, has at least some Spanish ancestry in their family tree. And the most common 20 surnames in Argentina are all Spanish. So uh, 
like we mentioned in the previous video, there are a lot of Italian surnames and there are a lot of people that have Italian ancestry, but almost everybody has Spanish ancestry here in Argentina. And during the late 20th century, the second half of the 20th century, after the uh, European immigration boom here in Argentina, the relationship between Spain and Argentina continued to be friendly. Um, during the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s, Argentina offered asylum to anybody who was fleeing Spain, fleeing that war, whether they did, were on one side of the war or the other. Um, and after the after World War II, during the Perón administration here, um, Eva Perón actually went over and visited um, on like a diplomatic state visit to um, to Spain, which at that time was under the control of Francisco Franco. And there have been a lot of diplomatic missions and visits back and forth. Uh, like that over the years. In fact, Argentina was one of only three countries to uh, not recognize UN sanctions against the Francisco Franco regime in Spain. Uh, I believe the other two were El Salvador and I don't remember the other one. I'll put it in the subtitle. During the regime of the military junta here and the Malvinas conflict in Argentina, the Spanish actually recognized Argentina's claim to sovereignty over the Malvinas, and uh, it was it was later found out, much later, in like declassified documents, that Margaret Thatcher was actually quite worried during the Falklands conflict that um, uh, that Spain may join on the Argentine side and use it as an opportunity to retake Gibraltar. Of course, the very small territory of Gibraltar, which the British control on the southern tip of Spain. Spain and Argentina have a, a pretty solid economic relationship. They import and export from each other. Argentina exports a lot of agricultural products to Spain. Spain uh, exports a lot of manufactured products, electronics and um, like industrial products, uh, pharmaceuticals and things like that. So they have a pretty healthy relationship and it's been pretty friendly diplomatically and economically. I believe there was a kerfuffle uh, maybe like 10 years ago over YPF, which is, if you're in Argentina, you see it all over the place. YPF is a gas station, and it's a petroleum company that's actually based in Spain, owned by Spain. And um, from what I've read, they nationalized it here in Argentina, and that was a bit of a, caused a bit of a, a stink with the Spanish, but uh, I think they ended up paying them restitution, and everything sort of settled now. In fact, in, in recent years, Spanish King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia actually came to Argentina and visited. And um, I believe actually the Spanish king was present at um, Javier Millet's inauguration just a few months ago uh, in December. So the relationship, you know, like I said, is, is, is pretty close between the two countries. Um, it's definitely friendly. There is still immigration coming from Spain, you know, uh, to Argentina. So even with all of that long history of ups and downs, good times and bad times, the relationship between Spain and Argentina right now is very strong, very friendly, and there's really no reason to, uh, to think that it wouldn't be going into the future. A few interesting side notes. One, there is a very large bank here in Argentina that is called Galicia. And originally, I thought that that was uh, a Spanish bank that, you know, just had branches here in Argentina. but. Turns out that was an Argentine bank that was started here in the early 1900s by a group of businessmen who were from Galicia. So you can see the uh, the Galician uh, immigration, like I mentioned, two million roughly Spanish and 70% of them are from Galicia. And that bank is all over the place. You can see branches of it, um, you know, pretty much in every city. There's one right here in uh, Chacaras de Coria. So that's an interesting one. Cordoba, the city where we were just before we came to Mendoza, is now, as of uh, I believe 2020, uh, a twin city with Cordoba in Spain. So uh, that's interesting. And of course, the dance that is so popular, the music so popular here in Argentina, tango, also very, very popular in Spain. So there's uh, cultural connections all across the board still to this day. And everywhere you go in Argentina, you can see them. You know, it's interesting to make a video about uh, you know the connections between Chile and Argentina, or the connections between Italy and Argentina, but because the the connection between Spain and Argentina is just so it's 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 so strong, and it's 
so old, you know, the history goes back so far. It's hard to just make one video about it because everywhere you look in Argentina, the, you know, the connection to the Spanish is there. Pretty much every video that we've made so far on this channel, it's been about 30 or so videos, 30 something videos, they all show the connection between Spain and Argentina. And everywhere you go in Argentina, you see that connection. So uh, making one video to highlight it, um, well, it's something that I wanted to do, of course, inspired by Plaza de España in the center of Mendoza. Um, it's something that we've kind of been doing this whole time. We've been making videos about the connection between Spain and Argentina without, like, specifically making videos about the connection between Spain and Argentina. So, what are we going to do next year? Um, still kind of hot. I think we do want to get into that church that I showed at the beginning of the video. And I think we will do that later today if it opens up. But, uh, I also kind of want to try and go get some lunch around here because there are tons of really good restaurants around here. And if we find a good one, maybe we'll show off a little bit of the food. Um, something I don't do very much on this channel is show off food. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know how to be a food vlogger. I, I just. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But um, let's try and go find something to eat. So I found a restaurant I want to try. It's called El Gallego, and. Uh, wanted to try it because, well, I mean, the food looks really good, but also because, you know, I was reading about Spain and Galicians, and that's the name for someone who's, like, here in Argentina who's from Galicia, un gallego, and um, I, I, I've read that the term gallego has been, like, applied to basically anybody who immigrated from Spain in post-colonial era. And regardless of whether they're actually from Galicia or not. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I guess some Argentines can let me know down in the comments whether that's true or not. The other thing I've read is that uh, Gallego is sort of like a, become like a negative stereotype here as well. Like if you call someone a, a Gallego, if someone who's from Spain, there's sort of like a history that goes back of that being a negative stereotype. I don't know. Uh, I just read one article about it that seemed to, uh, you know, point to a history of that term being used um, to, like, indicate, I don't know, someone who's stubborn or, or dumb or cheap or whatever, you know, insult that you want to throw on someone who's from Spain, you call him a gallego. I don't know if that's true or not. I'd be interested to see what uh, any of the Argentine viewers say down in the comments about that. Is gallego a like a, a, an insult, or is it just what you refer to someone who's, uh, you know, an immigrant from Spain? I don't know, but regardless, we're going to check out the restaurant El Gallego because uh, I saw some pictures on the Google Maps page, and the food looks really good. I mean, I think we should check it out, right? Right. Let's check it out. absolutely delicious I'm extremely full it is still extremely hot outside I'm sitting here back in the plaza out in the shade I think it's time we, uh, we go in check out this church see what it's like inside there and then I think we're gonna have to get a bus back to the city and uh, and call it for this video but before we do let's let's go check out this church let's see what it's like inside so we made it inside the church and right here in this courtyard there's a little sign, a saint over there, a statue, and the priest has let us come in. Muchas gracias, señor. Yo soy el párroco de acá, el sacerdote. Estamos bajo la vocación del perpetuo socorro. Ah. Nuestra madre del perpetuo socorro. Perpetual help, sí. ¿Eh? Eh, están pronto a cumplir 90 años. Oh, sí. En el 25, es en nuestro año jubilar. Ah. Wow, 
es muy hermoso. Muy, muy lindo. Sí. Eh, nosotros en el 2016 hicimos una restauración del templo y se abrieron las puertas, windows. Ah. Eh, eran ventanas altas y se le hicieron puertas ventanas. Y se le, a la estructura se la fortaleció. Sí. Porque estaba, en, se venía abajo, hubo un temblor y, y se fortaleció oh, toda la estructura. Sí, sí, sí. Cuando se hicieron, abrieron aquellas puertas, se encontró en el cimiento abajo piedra. Ah. Estaba hecho con piedras el, el cimiento, una pirca, que se, piedra sobre piedra. Sí, sí. Sacamos piedras y trajimos 12 piedras, como los 12 apóstoles, aquí. Entonces es más fuerte para... Pero el, el significado es que el altar, ¿Sí? el altar es una ah. piedra única porque representa a Cristo. Ah, entiendo, entiendo. ¿Ah? Entonces, y algunas piedras también se pusieron en los canteros afuera, en el jardín. Oh, en, en el jardín. Las piedras de... Creo que eh, este edificio es muy uh, interesante para mí porque um, es en el estilo de um, España colonial. Sí, sí, claro. Sí, pero es, es nuevo, pero... Uh, eh, eh, no es tan nuevo, está oh, restaurado, pero uh, es de 1935. 1930, oh, ok. Sí, pero no es, no es, uh, no ¿cómo es se dice? Antiguo, sí, sí. sí, sí, no es antiguo. Es muy, muy bellísimo. Muy interesante, muy interesante. Well, that was really nice. I'm really glad we got to go in there. That, uh, that gentleman, Padre Oswaldo. Oswaldo, he's a very nice gentleman. Let us in there. Uh, let us know about the renovations that were happening in that church. Uh, you know, to protect it against earthquakes. They have a lot of earthquakes out here in Mendoza. I think that's going to be it. I think that's going to be it for the video. The scene, I think what we want to see here in Chacaras de Coria. Got a nice meal. Got to see some recreated Spanish colonial architecture. Got to see inside that church. Got to talk a little bit about the long history between Argentina and Spain. I think that's a good video. I think it's a good place to end it. So, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.